All right, guys, happy Saturday or Sunday, and we're going to talk about NFL Week 9. Guys, uh, coming off a really good October, really, really good October, and we want to make sure that we keep that momentum going into November, so we're going to break down all of the uh, parlays, props. We're going to go over a same-game parlay here at the end. Jim's going to talk some sack props. Let's get right into it. Uh, weather, we do have a couple of games that are going to be affected by weather. Detroit and Green Bay looks like the big one. Um, mm -hmm. We are recording this on Saturday morning, and it looks like it's just going to be rain. Uh, there's, they're saying not like huge, huge downpour, but very wet, rainy. Um, the Rams in Seattle, chance for some light showers. Everything else seems to be good. The Monday night game, that's too far off, so just check the weather on Monday. But the, definitely the Detroit and Green Bay game. Make sure you know that there's going to be some uh, precipitation in the area. So. All right, guys, uh, hit the like button. Leave a comment in the comment section. Always love seeing what your guys' best bets are. We always want to uh, comment and uh, interact with you guys. But if you don't have a hot take, Jordan, if you don't have a best bet to put in the comment section, you know what to do. You go ahead and tell me to stop, Corbin. We'll pick. We'll get our word of the day. Stop. Suit. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Dress up in a nice suit. Yeah, if you just want to help us out, type the word suit in the comment section. Helps the algorithm boost our ranking on YouTube. Just a little token of appreciation. The word suit in the comment section. All right, guys, let's get into it. Um, let us talk about passing props to get us started. And we'll start with the Dolphins and the Bills. Jim, coming to you first. Do you like any of these quarterbacks? No, not for passing. Uh, I'm interested in the rushing attack in this game. I, I don't know what we're going to get from Tua round two. Um, the Bills, in my opinion, should throttle this team. <laughs> yeah. I think they're going to run the ball and chew the clock. So I don't even like Josh over the 242 or under. But the problem is these are big play opportunity teams. Like you can get a deep pass to Coleman. We can get a deep pass to Cooper. We can get a deep pass to Tyreek Hill every game. So not really comfortable with either of these, even the touchdown props. Corbin, you like any of these uh, quarterback? I was going to ask, I, I haven't looked it up yet, but what's the pass attempts for Tua? I, I feel like, uh, similar to what Jim said, I feel like... 33 and a half. Oh, I like that. He had 38 uh, last week and 37 in week one. I feel like they're going to be throwing the ball way more than running it, the Dolphins. I could see the Bills running it. Uh, we'll get to that later. But I, I think Tua is going to be throwing the ball quite often. 33 seems quite low, considering the Bills have had their number in every recent game. So... Yeah, that'd be the only way I'd look at that one, but uh, not too confident with the quarterbacks in that game. Broncos and the Ravens, I will start. I love Bo Nix over this total. This is the worst passing defense in the league in Baltimore and the number one rush defense. And Jim, you said it. Sean Payton is no dummy. Like, mm -hmm. like Sean Payton is a guy that's going to be like, listen, if we only run it 10 times and it keeps us in the game, fine. I don't need a balanced attack. We just... What's the weakness of the other team? It's the passing defense. This is a team that gives up 291 yards per game. We're getting a low number because it's Bo Nix and it's a rookie quarterback and you don't trust it. This guy threw for 284 yards against the Panthers. Uh, I'm not worried. In fact, I think this is a discount and uh, Bo Nix is probably my favorite quarterback prop. What do you think, Jim? I'm with you 100% on the Knicks to 17 and a half. 100%. Uh, they're not going to run the ball against this team. They're just not. They're not going to be able to. They're going to try for a little bit, and then it's going to be gone. So uh, when we get to the receivers, I have uh, some interesting receivers for Bo Nix <clears throat> on who's going to get the targets, and we just have to face reality at this point. We're to the point in the season where you kind of are what you are, famous saying. Um, the Baltimore pass defense is what it is, and it's atrocious. It's horrible. I don't care about the names on the back of the jerseys. They're bad. They're bad. Worst. Uh, Corbin, do you like any, any of these guys? Uh, I actually don't think – I'm not sure if I – I kind of like Bo Nix at his total, but I have him in an alt play coming up, so I'll save, I'll save Okay. That. Commanders and the Giants. Uh, Jaden Daniels surely didn't look hurt <laughs> last week against the Bears. Uh, Corbin, do you like Jaden Daniels or Daniel Jones props? I like the rushing for both teams in this game. I, I'm again. I, I've been tricked into taking the Daniel Jones over already once this year. If I'm taking anything Giants related, it's just neighbors. It's literally just him. I don't want anything else. So you were tricked. I, I, I tricked myself into <laughs> Somebody... it. 
That's great. Jim, do you like either of these guys? What's, uh, what's the touchdown passes? Pull them up. I'm not really worried about yards. I want to see I was the touchdown tricked. passes. I was scammed. I was All duped. Right. <laughs> I, I know it's 270. Okay. <clears throat> Daniel Jones has not thrown a touchdown at MetLife in what what do they say? Nine games it is now? Eight games? He's thrown more interceptions than touchdowns at home. He has not thrown a touchdown pass. <laughs> like, why is it at one and a half? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and he's friends the commanders. I, the commanders I, up I so don't many. care. <laughs> In those eight games, he's played bad secondaries, and it went nowhere. Um I'm interested in taking this one and a half as a parlay piece with something else. I think this could look like free money after this game. Uh, honestly, I think the commanders could throttle them uh, score wise. I, I think this giants team is getting frustrated. They're trending downwards. You're starting to hear the questions about Daniel Jones and the press is pressing. No pun intended. Uh, the ball on what he's going to do with his team going forward here. It just, Washington coming off that big win division game. This is a chance to really get a real nice lead uh, in this division and really almost lock it up very soon. Uh, the way Dallas is playing, I mean, they're going after the Eagles, but the Eagles aren't anything special this year. I think Washington Ooh. is a real legit shot to win this division. I would expect the Eagles to fall off a cart. So this big game, I trust the coach to get these guys out. And I don't think Jones is doing anything this game. Well, this will be fun, Jim. I, I like the Eagles. We'll go head to head. I think the Eagles are going to go on a run. So that'll be fun. To, uh, to I agree monitor. with Andy. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be that'll be interesting. All right. Uh, what, what did I see? Daniel Jones is one in 14 in primetime games. He's just like the worst. Uh, new poor, Kurt. Poor, poor <laughs> Daniel Jones. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch our video. Hopefully we're giving you guys some good value. And if you're watching this, I know you take your bankroll serious. Like we do, we treat it like a business. Every play that we put out for clients at Wager Talk, we bet with our own money. Um, our NFL Week 9 pack is up right now. We hit 70% of our plays in October, so NFL is going fantastic. We do have the promo code that's available. Andy3 gets a three-day pass for $39. If you're watching this on Saturday, definitely take advantage before the UFC event that we have a 5% play that is up. If you use it on Monday, you're going to get all of our NFL plays for Sunday. And for Monday, as well as NBA, as well as NHL, we have started off 5-0 and in NBA, and uh, we've cashed our last two NHL plays. So all those sports are running really good. There is no reason to not get a three-day pass if you're thinking about getting just one of our packs. If you're thinking about just getting our NFL pack, just spend a few extra bucks and get a three-day pass. It gets all of our sports, all of our percentages. Promo code Andy3 on checkout. It's a three-day pass for $39. Uh, we always do full disclosure, talk about our plays and our winning percentage. 490 wins, 313 losses. We are plus 167.21 units for an 8.9% ROI in 2024. It's the dream year. Originally, we set out a goal for 100 units. It was 150 units, 175 units. If we can get over 175 units, we're going to try and get to 200 units by the end of the year. So uh, hopefully you guys are taking advantage of some of these longer term all access passes. So uh, once again, promo code Andy3 gets you a three-day pass for $39. Good luck in all your place and back to more props. All uh, right, let's talk about the Raiders and the Bengals, Burrow and Minshew. Corbin, either of these guys strike your fancy? Yeah, I really like Burrows under his total this week. I just He's just not getting it done this year. I'm expecting a close, tight game. I think both teams could be running the ball more than we expect here. He's gone over this under this total in six of his eight games, and the two he didn't was the Ravens. We just talked about how bad their pass defense was, and the Commanders, who don't exactly have a good one either. The Raiders' pass defense isn't that bad. It's ranked seventh in the league, and they've held their last uh, five opposition quarterbacks under this total. I just I don't see him getting this kind of production at the minute. So, Jim, either of these guys? No T. Higgins, no Joe Burrow. I agree with Corbin 100. percent We don't. I don't think it's confirmed yet with Higgins, but again, this is, he's going to have injuries all year. <laughs> yeah, we we talk about this every week with these injuries, and we'll get to it with Jordan Love and the rest of that. Uh, just once one thing is hurt, other things get hurt, and we're yeah. seeing that with Higgins. So no T Higgins, no Joe Burrow. Uh, yeah, passing wise, no, I want nothing. 
Yeah, Maybe shout out reception to, props. Shout out to T. Higgins for being ruled out after we recorded last week. I think Corbin, yeah. he was like even in your same game parlay. Yeah, and of was. course, the, of course, the comment section was nice enough to point that out. Like, like we should have known. Hey, uh, the other <laughs> the other part still hit. I know. True. I know. We, we 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 if we release it on Sunday morning and wait for the injury news. Like, come on, release it earlier. Then we release it earlier earlier miss an injury. Like, what are you guys doing? Oh god, love the comment section. I'll make sure I get in the locker rooms ahead of time for the show. Yeah, really yeah. Code word is do better. Code word is suit. Uh let's talk about <laughs> the, the cowboy, the cowboys in the Falcons. Uh Kirk Cousins to throw one touchdown continues to be just the most incredible parlay piece. I think that's 64 out of 66 games that he's thrown at least one. It's just Pencil it in. I know it's minus 900, but you can throw it into your parlays. Um, Dak Prescott's been awful. Uh, he's completely destroyed fantasy teams that drafted him. If there's a week that he can do good, this is it. Just because the Falcons put no pressure. Uh, I, th- I think uh, PFF has the Falcons pass rush ranked worst. Mm-hmm. They just When they snap the ball, you can just sit there and do whatever you want. If there's a game to go over... This is the week. So I would look at Dak Prescott in this one. Uh, Jim, what do you think? Falcons are going to put up points on the Cowboys. Hence, Dak is going to throw the ball. So I love love the over 265. I wouldn't be shocked to see both quarterbacks creep up around 300 in this game. Uh, You know, it all depends on the workload for the running game with Atlanta. You know, if they really want to commit to it, I think they can run against the Cowboys. I know they can run against the Cowboys. Um, But this could be just a passing extravaganza. In this fight, this fight, this this game. Um, that's that. But how that, many brawls that, are they having on the pitch? What's that? Yeah. I was gonna say, Jim. How many fights are they having on this? Uh, <laughs> this is what happens game? when you record UFC videos and <laughs> well, then we've been on a run. video. <laughs> 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 UFC video went to bed, got up doing an NFL video. <laughs> We're going to take the, Kirk Cousins' money line and uh, to knock out Dak go. Prescott. <laughs> I think it's interesting that the touchdowns are juiced, both of them, to one and a half. Even Dak. They're yeah. kind of telling you. I, I think they're telling you a lot with that. Well, they're also telling you Dallas's rushing game is one of the worst in the history of football. So, Corbin, two, do you have any opinions? Two dome on? teams in a, in a dome as yeah, well. Yeah. Know. Corbin, do you like any of these quarterbacks? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, what about Derek Carr and Bryce Young, Corbin? Eh? Bryce eh? Young interception. It's a just, Love it. you just, Love you, it. just have, you have to play. He had two last week. <laughs> had three in his first two weeks, including two against the Saints. I forgot what the juice is. I think it was only minus 150. It's only minus that. 150. That's not okay. bad. Yeah, the Saints defense isn't great, but I, I, nor is Young. He's not great either. I mean, it doesn't take <laughs> <laughs> nothing special. My only worry is Dalton is technically back. And if they bench him and get Dalton in, I was like, oh. But, yeah, I, I think he froze an intercept. I think he froze Well, if Dalton end. comes in because he's that bad, he it's probably because he's yeah, thrown a horrific interception. <laughs> probably. You got you to gotta hope it's not three fumbles. <laughs> 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 Uh, Jim, do you have anything on these quarterbacks? Uh, I, I, no, I don't, but I love what Corbin just said about the interception. Take him to throw an interception and take Jones under the one and a half. That Keep might be your simple. quarterback parlay right there. It's That's a good one. Uh, my biggest regret from last week was not taking Jameis Winston over his passing yards. It was in the low 200s, and he was playing the aforementioned, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> um, you think we go back to him, Corbin, Jameis? No, uh, okay. like I like some of his receivers. We'll get to that later, but I, it's like he's had the high spot now. Mm-hmm. It's like, is he going to slowly creep down to earth? I think he could still have a good game, but what is it, two forty four? It's still quite a high total. I'm really not sure how this game is going to go. Quite honestly, between these two teams, so I agree. This is an interesting, yeah. interesting game flow, which makes props kind of tough. Is that where you're at, Jim? Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, I agree. We we don't know. We've seen a shift with the Chargers. They're putting the ball in Herbert's hand a little bit more. Could be because they want to. It could be because he's healthy finally. I mean, he was walking wounded for the first couple of weeks of the season. Um, so I really just kind of I got to kind of take a wait and see approach. Love what Corbin said. Last week was Winston with no film. Nothing this year. Nobody knew. Now we have film. We've yeah. seen this script over and over and over again. He's going to be a sexy, popular pick. This week, people are going to play his touchdowns and over his yards. And now he's going to go up against not the Ravens' pass defense. 
So I, if I just, anything, I'd be looking at the Winston interception this week. I, that I could say. Jameis Winston quoting Eminem after the game last week in his post game where he says, says you only get one shot. And oh, this that's is a his, recipe th- for disaster. Well, it's his third team he started for. Yeah. What are you talking about? One shot. You're, you only get seven <laughs> shots. Do not only- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That doesn't make for good song lyrics. Uh, all right, Jim. Uh, Drake May, 199. He's going up against a tough defense. It's with good pass defense, atrocious team. The mm-hmm. Titans are awful. Uh, the Patriots, hold my beer. We're awful, too. I I almost kind of like the over just because what if this game is close and there you know there's some hurry up time I don't know I I I think Drake May is an over player in the props market mm-hmm. I'm not taking unders on him I, I I like watching him I think he's good What do you think 199 I, I agree man uh, the 199 is really low I know it's a good pass defense but this game it just takes a couple plays to get over 199 it's it doesn't take a whole lot to throw it's for such 200 a yards in this league it's super low. Yeah. Um, so if anything, I'm looking at the over, I don't know if the Patriots are going to have a whole lot of success running with Stevenson, it, it, the run game of the Patriots. It's, I, I don't think this team really knows what they are. And in looking at their game scripts, when may has been in, it's almost more like they're handing on the ball and saying, show us what you got, kid. They could be running the ball with, with Stevenson 27 times a game and, but they're not. If they're not, I don't think they're really concerned about winning, winning and competing. They know it's a rebuilding gear. I think they want to see what they have in May, and they're going to let them throw it. We said this three weeks ago when he first came in the lineup. They're going to let it fly. So there's there's a receiving problem I'm going to talk about when we get to this game. I mean, full disclosure, <laughs> quarterbacks versus Titans have just been terrible. 167.14 yards per game. So that's the argument against Corbin. You do anything with Drake May or passing? Uh, see, I kind of lean the over, but the pass defense is so good. But then you look at who they, they played. They played a, a week one, Caleb Williams, who was his first start. So you can excuse that. When they played the Packers, they I think we had Malik Willis. You're right. Doesn't help. Yep. They played the Dolphins, who I think had Skylar Thompson <laughs> at that point. Okay. They played the Lions last week, where they were up five scores without having to do anything like there there you can put pick holes in their like the resume the schedule that doesn't tell them, the whole story yeah exactly but i i can't play an over and under so. all right uh jaguars and eagles uh jim th- <laughs> we do a segment on the ufc called the woulda coulda shoulda like <laughs> where at, at the end of the day you're just like why didn't i bet that uh, Jalen Hurts at 213 and a half passing yards is my woulda, coulda, shoulda. I he could throw for 300 yards against it. I, I, Jacksonville, I think, showed their cars that they're throwing in the towel on this season. If you didn't notice that story, they traded their starting left tackle, like Cam Robinson. When, when you trade, yeah, your, he's bad. Yeah, he's bad. <laughs> he's yeah. bad. He's bad. But Jim. When you're Wait, trading you're right, starting yes. offensive mm-hmm. linemen, there's not many starting offensive linemen. When you're trading it, to me, that just says, like, we're the season's done. Uh, this is a terrible secondary. And the Eagles, I, like I said, <laughs> Jim, I, I like the Eagles. Uh, here's who they get the next few weeks. They get Jacksonville. They get Dallas. They get a big game against Washington. They got the Rams and uh, Baltimore, but then they get Carolina, Pittsburgh, Washington, and then they finish with Dallas and New York. There's a lot of win. There's a lot of games that are going to yeah. be big time favorites um, in there. So uh, I like Hertz over two thirteen and a half uh, as my 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 play. That this is going to be a play that I don't play, and then Hertz goes over in the first half. Uh, Corbin, do you like any of these quarterback props? Yeah, I love Hertz as well this week. It's such a low total to me. He's gone over in two of the last three, and the one he didn't was a big blowout win. Uh, he got 236 last week versus the Bengals, and the Jags' pass defense is really bad. I think this is a great game to get Hertz rolling into those games that you just mentioned. I think there's a great spot for him, quite honestly. Jim? Well, friends don't let friends pass on winners. So I'm going to go <laughs> third person to say, yes, I think we're playing Jalen Hurts over the passing. Uh, even the passing touchdowns. I know the tush push. I know Barkley. But if Hurts is going to get to this 213, how's he going to do it? There's going to be one big play to A.J. Brown. Yeah, There's going to be one big play to Devonta Smith. 
You're already both spoiling of them my both receiving of them. props, Jim. <laughs> oh, <laughs> save it for save it for later. Come on. <laughs> you could just say nothing and agree with me when they come yeah. around, right? <laughs> I just it, they're going to be big plays. Uh, we might not have to see any goal line rushes, um, but the two thirteen. God, is that low? Against Jaguar defense. Yeah, Jaguars giving up two hundred eighty one yards exactly. per game passing. So, uh, Bears at the Cardinals. Uh, speaking of teams not great against pass, Cardinals two hundred forty five point six yards per game. Caleb Williams is at two twenty one. Um, I think people are going to be thrown off the scent because of last week's game. I thought that was just a really good defensive <laughs> game by Washington, whose defense is underrated, and they've been getting better as the season goes on. I think this 221 is a little bit lower. Um, I can't do anything with Kyler just because the Bears' defense seems to be pretty good, and I cannot figure out this Cardinals team to save my life. I, I haven't bet on them. I probably will. This may be a team I don't have one bet on. <laughs> for the entire season, Corbin, what do you think? Uh, I agree with what you just said. I I actually don't have a good read on either of these two teams. Uh, I I'm more like Swift in the rushing for the Bears, but yeah, don't want to touch the Cardinals at all. They're just so you, you just know what the Cardinals are gonna do. Like they're just gonna try and run it with Connor. They're gonna try and get some throws to Marvin Harrison. It's like that they feel quite an easy team to try and scheme against. And if they take, they, they could easily take away one of those aspects, which makes them doing the other one significantly harder. It's I, I remember the game versus Green Bay where we just stopped uh, Kyler and Connor, and then it basically didn't have anything. So it's it's very hard to take a play in that team. I think. Uh, Jim Lions and Packers we don't quite know who's uh, going to be quarterback for the Packers yet. No props. Jared Goff in the rain at two eighteen outdoors, grass <laughs> under. Interceptions. Oh, okay. All right. Interceptions. Where's our Jared Goff interception prop? As soon as I hear rain and Goff outdoors, I'm going to interceptions. Oh, it's plus money. There you go. Love it. Love it. Love it. We've love been it, we've it. been great at in, getting interceptions this year mm -hmm. as well. And it's, the Lions uh, take shots. Yeah. Like it, it, they're gonna they're gonna toss one up. <laughs> they're gonna yeah. toss one up. And in this weather, it's it's Garrett. I mean, I mean, uh, Corbin. Uh, you're you're the Packers guru. I mean, what do you think about this two eighteen? I think you can't take any props until we know who's at quarterback. If we have Willis at quarterback, it's going to change the game significantly to a love. It's going to change the whole game script, which affects every prop on the board. Then the only prop that I can take is rushing props in this one because. Agreed. Uh, Rams and the Seahawks. Ooh, I would have loved to take a Matthew Stafford over and then Puka tweaks his knee. Don't really know yet. I would wait until right before the game here. Uh, but man, if Stafford has Puka and he's got Cooper cut back, I'm all in on the uh, over 239. I'll be patient. I won't do anything with this until Sunday. Uh, Corbin, what do you think of these two? Uh, I'm passing on both of them. Jim? Track me. Like both Crack over me, that could be uh, funny. <laughs> I, I, it, they're gonna they're gonna be points in this game. There's gonna be points. Both these teams play. They're both their defenses have gotten worse as the season has gone on. I mean, the Seattle defense looked great at the beginning of the year. Now they're just a sieve. Uh, they're bad. Geno's turning the ball over. He's throwing the ball away. We have no Metcalf. So where's the offense gonna come from? I think you can look at both running backs in the passing game in this game. So, and that's going to add to our quarterback total. So I think we end up seeing a high scoring game here. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to see both quarterbacks go over. I'm a little surprised that Geno's is above. Like I, I would flip those lines personally, like even with Puka out. Um, so I like the Stafford over and uh, the Geno I'm kind of indifferent on, but uh, the Stafford over, I could see. Colts fans are rejoicing everywhere. Uh, Flacco is in, Richardson is out. And uh, Jim, you brought up a, a good point, which I think affects what the, the, the Colts are doing. Um, I think the Colts realize that this division, they could they could get one here. Mm -hmm. uh, the Titans and Jags are awful. And Houston, uh, like Jimmy, you're talking about, they're off, Houston's offensive line is a joke. And C.J. Stroud looked beat to shreds. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if the Colts were just like, we're only a – couple games out of this one forget the development how many times do you have a chance to win the division i'm all in on flacco uh i think but the way that i would want to play flacco is the uh, pass attempts um corbin i know you're a big fan of flacco we all are on this show oh yeah uh 35 and a half hell yeah 
Absolutely. Against this defense, I think they're going to be uh, throw the ball a lot. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm I'm almost – I don't want to take – Flacco this week. I want to just. I'm. I'm more taking his receivers. I. I think I can dial in on who he's going to throw to better than uh, the overall. I am actually looking at Donald over 250. I've got an alt play coming up. I think with him, but I still like him over the 250. The Colts passing defense is awful. I mention it almost every week. They've given up this total four of the last six, and the two that went over, two that went under even were Will Levis and Tyler Huntley. I, I mean, <laughs> kind of said something. Uh, he's Donald's got so many weapons, and I think the fact that Flacco is playing almost almost makes this game more competitive, which helps the Donald over total. Quite honestly, uh, Jim, uh, uh, Jim, can you do, do your thing about the Texans and what you saw with the offensive line? Because you 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 follow the offense and defensive mm-hmm. lines. I think what you're what you were noticing with Houston is a, is a really important point moving forward. Well, they're they're beat up. First of all, the interior of that def- offensive line is not good, and everybody wants to talk about the outside pass rushers. But throughout history, games get wrecked in between both guards. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely wrecked. You think back to the greatest nose tackles of all time. Were they prolific pass rushers? No, but they would pick up two linemen and shove them into the quarterback's face. This is a pressure that Stroud has not seen. Yeah, he knows how to escape from the outside. Uh, Laramie Tunsil is the most penalized left tackle in the, in the league right now. Hmm. I, I was shocked to see that because of the bad left tackles that we had. I knew it was Cam Robinson at some point, but Stroud is beat up. He's taken more hits already this season. It, he was barely touched his rookie year. They were getting the ball out quick. The injury to receivers, this is all compounding to bad offensive line play. And if you cannot protect your quarterback, you can't win in this league. That's all it comes down to. So we're looking at it. And I remember watching the game on Monday just saying, you know, Jets had eight sacks. Jets haven't really been a dominant pass rushing force, to say the least, this year. And they made them look like the sack exchange, uh, the greatest unit of all time for that team. So, yeah, I think I think the Texans are in real trouble, man. Real trouble. Um, yeah, like it, it was glaring. It was, it was really, really tough. So, uh, let's take a look at rushing props here. Um, uh, a couple big names here. Uh, Corbin, what do you think about Dolphins and Bills rushing props? I'm going to go back to Ray Davis. I mentioned it oh, last love week. It. <laughs> love it. Love it. This is oh, what I'm with, love it. With, yeah. So, uh, we've mentioned uh, the Bills have had, uh, the Dolphins number emphatically this, uh, not just even this year, like previous years, going back quite a way. Uh, they're going to have to give Cook a rest at some point. They can't just keep running him into the ground. Uh, it's such a low total. He's gone over this in the last three games with 29 last week where I mentioned it, 41 the week before and 97. He also had uh, 29 in the game versus the Dolphins last year. I just, I love this play. So, Jim? Oh, Corbin, you read my mind. I have been printing money with Ray Davis late in games. This season, it's just it, and and I love my favorite play in this game is the James Cook over and uh, rushing and receiving. It's at eighty five and a half. I think he easily gets over this mark in this game. He's a big proponent in the passing game. You can tell that Allen is comfortable with him. I know the addition of Mari Cooper. I still think this team runs through James Cook. It's just what they've done all season. But Ray Davis being below twenty yards, I was praying for a number under twenty yards. Yeah. So. To- Two and a half difference. I'm in. I am all in on Ray Davis here. Broncos and the Ravens. <laughs> the books know. Javante <laughs> Williams, 36 and a half. This is a starting running back. Uh, it it doesn't hurt that he, he had like 20 carries or whatever he had last week. He rushed for 40. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it is just kind of his quarterback's 24 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Corbin, you want anything to do with these rushing props? No. no. Jim? I like the Bo Nix 24 and a half. I, uh, <laughs> that's where I'm going. It's not Javante. Um, I do think he's going to throw the ball, but there are going to be those instances where he can take off and run. Baltimore does have their own mobile quarterback. They know how to defend him well. If this number was in the 30s and 40s, I was going to look to play the under, but I think they lined this a little too low and Bo could get this on three to four rushes. I think that's mm. all it's going to take. 
Yeah. Um, uh, Commanders and the Giants. Uh, Corbin, kind uh, of talk you into Brian Robinson Jr. here. You can. Uh, actually, when I was looking this up, there were no props on either of the running backs, but I think both teams are going to run the ball. I don't know. I haven't looked up their totals to know if they're good, but I'm expecting both teams to run the ball, quite honestly. And the Brian Robinson at 57.5 sounds pretty good to me. So, Yeah, Jim, what do you think? Uh, be careful with Tyrone Tracy. He was on the injury report after that game. You know, he's only played running back for one year. He's new to this position. This is the most that this man has been hit. His entire career. Uh, what we, we were talking about this with Alexander was it Mason, Jordan Mason, Jordan Mason, right? Yes. So mm, be a little up. careful with that Tyrone Tracy right there. I think we might see some carries from the other backs to try to limit his touches, especially if this game gets out of control. Uh, that being said, when he's in, he has been dynamic and he's been putting up yards. But this is a short week and he's banged up. I could see him tweaking another injury and going out and your place dead. So love the Brian Robinson over 57 and a half. Yeah. I was just looking it up. He's had 65 and 71 the last two weeks. I, I think they're going to be ahead in this game. I already mm. bet. I bet the commander's money line when it came out at minus 180. I think the commanders are going to win this game quite easily. And I could see them running the ball quite often, especially towards the end. So. Raiders and the Bengals. Uh, I think we'll talk about Madison with receiving props. I want nothing to do with uh, these these rushers. Uh, Corbin, I can't. I, again, I I haven't seen. I was waiting to see if there was a Madison rushing attempts. Uh, there wasn't. He's had quite a few the last couple of weeks. 14, 23, 14 and fifteen. There wasn't a rush attempts out when I looked. Thirteen and a half. Sounds pretty good to me. Over in the last four weeks, I think they're going to have to run the ball at times. I like him in the passing game as well as the rushing this week. So. Jim? Nothing. Cowboys and the Falcons. <laughs> the Cow Cowboys rush attack just makes me laugh. Um, I can't figure out the Cowboys rush attack. Can't figure out the Falcons. This is probably the easiest pass for rushing uh, props. Jim, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, this is just... Uh, I, would, I would... It is gross. It is gross. Brian Robinson is going to get the lion's share of the carries. The number on Algiers is low. B. John uh, Robinson. Um, but uh, I still think it's just a passing game. I do. I think Robinson could get his. I think they're going to be throwing the ball all over the field. I'm not willing to plant my flag on unders for these guys, so move on. Corbin? I was going to say, I, I I think the Falcons are going to run the ball more than uh, you guys seem to think. I think they're going to I think they're going to get a lead, and I think they're going to run a lot. I can't play either of the Falcons running backs at their total, so I was trying to find a way to play them. The closest I can get is Bijan's longest over fifteen and a half. It's it's quite a high total, and I kind of think that you almost have to take the rush and receive with him. But the longest rush total is pretty good. I think they're going to have success running the ball. He's gone over the longest in three of the last four, and the Cowboys' rush defense ain't great. I also look to play uh, Zeke under his uh, alt number again, because uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but one of my, my alt play last week had him under 35 and a half, and that was with him being the running back too, and then uh, obviously he got promoted because Dowdle was out, and he still went under. So, <laughs> yeah, if I, if I can take an alt under on Zeke again, I, I think I might just do that for the rest of the year. Didn't didn't he have like thirty one in yeah, the first half, four. and then he then oh, he touched it? They were done. Yeah, they, they, he just didn't touch the ball. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was great. It was great. That's why uh, you take alts, though. That yeah. that 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 margin of error that I gave myself even helped with him being promoted from running back two to a running back one. It's like <laughs> it was great. Uh, Saints and the Panthers. So. <laughs> I, I talked about Hubbard over 53 and a half on Friday morning. Now it's 66 and a half. I don't know if that much money came in on Hubbard where it moved up or if literally they accidentally released the wrong number. I, I like, I, I, I don't know. Um, I just can't play a rushing total when the line moves that much. So I'm out, even though the saints have given up over 200 yards rushing the last three games on average. Um, Derek Carr. I don't know if it changes anything. Um, the Panthers are awful. I don't think the Saints are that much better, Jim. Any of these guys? No, I want no part of this game, man. Corbin, nope. 
Chargers and the Browns. Uh, Corbin, you like either any of these guys? I I kind of like J.K. Dobbins to go under seventy one and a half. I wonder if he's running out of steam. I I don't remember a season where he's played this many games for quite a while. He's gone under in four of his last five. It's such a high total. I know the Browns aren't great versus the run, but I think that's factored into him having this line at seventy one and a half. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the game script is going to be, but 71 seems quite high to me. So I, I, the Browns are better than you think. Only 85.6 yards per game um, mm. rushing for, for running backs. I think you're on the right track with that one, uh, Jim. Uh, you, you're right. The Browns defense was put in a big hole with Watson in the beginning half of this season. They are better than Great people point. think they are. Uh, they had a lot of short fields that they had to defend. They had a lot of real bad field position games where they were just put in bad situation after bad situation. So with this quarterback change, again, we got to see week two here with Winston. If he's going to turn the ball over, they might be in trouble. We might be able to get more run for Dobbins, but it's a wait and see approach for me. Patriots and Titans only one. Corbin, you anything with no. Stevenson? Jim? Nope. Jaguars and Eagles. Saquon, 89 and a half. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll pass on all these. That number is so crazy. He probably goes over, though. <laughs> <Same thing. laughs> probably I kind of – the only one I could kind of get to is Trevor Lawrence over 12 and a half. Lack of running backs kind of leads me to think he could get <clears> some <throat> runs. He's gone over in two of the last three. I, not an official play, but I kind of lean that way if I had to. With the lack of options they have at wide receiver now, yeah, I could see like him having to tuck the ball and run. Jim, is that a decent look? Yeah, we're all in lockstep there. Uh, now, granted, Cam Robinson was horrible, uh, but you still got a guy who couldn't beat him out for the job yeah. <laughs> coming yeah. in. So, and this could be a wake up moment for the Philly pass rush. I could most certainly see them tormenting Lawrence most of this game. We're thinking that the Jaguars are going to be down and Philly's going to throw all over them. So that's 12 and a half. Man, that's pretty good. Bears and the Cardinals. Corbin, uh, did you mention DeAndre Swift? Yeah, I like I like Swift in this game. I, I've mentioned I don't have a great read on both teams normally, but I think this game is going to be quite close. The Cardinals defense seemingly can't stop anyone at all. Um, he's gone easily over this in the last four weeks, had 129 last week. I, I think it's a Swift game. Same. Jim, what's the swift rushing and receiving? Uh, rushing and receiving is uh, 88 and a half. Pretty good. So Playable. It's basically 20, 20, Playable. What is that? 22 receiving. Kind of yeah, about 22 it. receiving added. I mean, it's rushing. just he could take one of those screen passes against this bad defense and take it 50. And I would just be sick to my stomach if I had just the rushing. Yeah, and I, you <laughs> yeah. Know, one play for 50 yards receiving and you're sitting real pretty for the rest of the game. Uh, bad weather game kind of screams running backs here. Corbin Gibbs and yeah. Montgomery. What do you it, think? It's actually quite interesting. I don't know. Again, I had a similar thing when I looked at Montgomery's number last night. It was 38 and a half. <laughs> I, I don't know if that was just a mistake. Yeah. When I looked, it was. Uh, Why didn't you I, text me? <laughs> Why wasn't that? Uploaded? I don't think you guys were awake at that point when I was. Wake looking. me <laughs> up, <laughs> Jim. Jim, wake up. There's a Montgomery prop we need to bet. Um, I, I like Gibbs. I've I've been saying I prefer Gibbs for the last few weeks. Um, he's gone over in five of the last six. I think they're going to be up. I think that I I'm expecting Willis to play. So I I think the Lions are going to have uh going to be up. I think they're going to be running the ball. We still can't stop anyone on the ground, I think we'll try and take away the passing game and Gibbs, Gibbs is going to run through us. So I'm going Gibbs 66 and a half. Jim? Play them both. Rams and... I, I'm, I'm sick of losing on uh, the Lions trying to pick which one. Oh, geez. They both score. They both get their touches every week. Hurt or not, play both. Uh, yeah, you know, I know who's not touching the ball in the lines. Sam Laporta, uh, <laughs> it was wrecked by fantasy teams. Rams, oh, and really, Andy? You haven't, you haven't mentioned that at all. You should have brought every that up week. It's just, it's just like we're getting to the point where it's about time to, to kind of maybe do like some mid season, like who's like fantasy, just superstars and absolute 
Um, Absolutely fun. Just yeah. wreckers. So, uh, yeah, like Baker Mayfield and uh, uh, Derrick Henry, like on the good, on the flip, uh, on the the greats, and then like on the bad side, you've got your Sam Laportas, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the Rams and the Seahawks. Uh, <laughs> Kyron at ninety three and a half. What's he scored ten games in a row? Um, I, these numbers are. Pretty inflated. I don't. I for me personally, there's nothing I can do with it, Jim. Every week they're inflated, and every yeah. week they hit. Oh, well, that's a good point. It's so brutal with this guy. They they the books have figured out exactly where to line him, where all of us are too scared to bet it. They're just like, ah, oh, it's kind of high. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. And after every year games game, what's the stack sheet? Ninety-seven yards and two touchdowns. Oh, he scored two touchdowns in the first half. Oh, a piece of ran for one thirty-five every week. The guy just absorbs touches. Um, and I'm going to say it again: uh, it, it's too high for me to play. It just, yeah. It's just too high. Uh, I kind of like Walker in this spot um, with no DK. I think he's going to become a little more of a. He has to become a more focus of the offense. Tyler Lockett is a ghost of himself. So I really think Seattle needs to come out and try to play some bully ball against this bad defense. Walker at 65 and a half. I would lean on before I would Kyron Williams. I, I, I appreciate uh, Tyler Lockett because he takes a page out of Marvin Harrison's the, mm -hmm. the, the old Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison was the OG at not taking big hits. He would, he would, catch the ball and he'd run until he got close to a fender and then he would go down. Mm -hmm. But Tyler Lockett is taken to another level. He just catches the ball and goes down. Yes. He, he, he doesn't <laughs> run to the defender. He doesn't get close to the defender. He just catches it and goes down, which I love. Longevity. You get that money, uh, Tyler Lockett. You get a few more years. Out of I wish we country. could get over-unders on Yak with, with him. <laughs> Play the under every None. week. Right. None. Yes, absolutely. I, quick, quickly on uh, Kyron Williams, I think is a great player to throw in an alt, uh, alt piece. I, I forgot to look at it in the end. I've got it written down. But like him to have uh, like 60, 70 rushing yards just gives you that margin again. I think it's like minus 300 or something. And then also, uh, I'm probably going to take him to have more rushing yards than Kenneth Walker. It's minus 260. So yeah. I'll probably parlay that. I think he's going to smoke him. Colts and the Vikings. Um, I like an Aaron Jones prop, but it's receiving, so I'll get to that. Other than that, uh, this line uh, seventy-one and a half for Taylor's way too big against this Vikings defense. So uh, this is a, a pass on these rushing props. Corbin, what do you think? Uh, pass. Jim, nothing. All right, let's move to receiving props. Uh, Corbin, you, you've when when two has been healthy, you've been you've had a good read on Waddle and Tyree Kill. Are we going back to them, or is this just kind of like, yeah? Mm, I don't it's really it. like. That. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's, it. it's an error this week. I'm I'm going to go for eight uh, eight chain over his receptions. Uh, I'm expecting Miami to be down or at the very least close. Uh, he had six receptions last week, seven the first two weeks, including against the Bills. I th I think he could easily go over four and a half. So, uh, Jim, what do you think? Are we starting to see Dawson Knox become a bigger part of the offense? I think it's something that the books maybe have not caught on yet. I'm not ready Look to back it. Number. Just to have I mean, that's catch. just ridiculous. That's, that's a, a parlay piece if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. It's a great one. And, and seven and a half yards. He went two for 50 last week. <laughs> I believe he's got, let me just double check, against the Titans. I believe he got involved against the Titans as well. Is that a yeah, Dawson Knox, one weeks. for five. It wasn't a ton, but he's good for that one reception a game. Um, I'm curious where this Bills offense is going to go. It's something I'm going to monitor. Other than that, I don't have any other plays. I just want to watch and see if we can get one of these real low lines on Dawson Knox in the future, if he's going to be a bigger part of this offense. Is, is Cooper still questionable? Is he going to play this week? I feel like I saw him on an injury report somewhere. I don't see any props for him, so... Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, but the Bills give up the most receptions to running backs in the league per game. So, uh, oh, you're, yeah. thank you for my eight chain. Well over mm -hmm. six. Yep. Uh, Broncos and the Ravens. Corbin, do you like any of these receivers? Yes, you know it. I love uh, 
I love actually I've got it in an alt play coming up, so I should probably hold off mentioning it. But I love Javante uh, Williams just on his even on his normal rece receptions and receiving. I think I think Bo Nix is going to check it down quite a lot, so that's where I'm looking. I also like Rashad Bateman. He's gone over this total twenty two and a half in every single game this year. I don't understand why this total is still so low. So I'm with you. Like okay, so what they traded for Deontay Johnson? What? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> so, Jim, Jim, what do you think? I like Bateman, too. I think that's my favorite receiving prop in this game. As long as the ball doesn't bounce off his face mask going over the middle, that'll he'll it's go been an issue. real easy. Been a it's, bit been of an issue. it's been an issue. That was infuriating sitting on a Bateman over last week, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, here's something uh, I don't know if too many people are uh, going to be taking here. Uh, Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin, 23 and a half yards, and I believe he's at, what, two and a half receptions? I think if we think Bo is going to throw the ball here, I mean, the attention is going to go to the number one. It's going to two and a half receptions of plus money. Perfect. Uh, I think this kid's going to see some work. He saw some work before when Bo has let this ball go. He's from Oregon. They brought him in because he's familiar with Bo Nix. I can see him getting over this number against this wretched defense. It's not, I, I want to try to find small, receiving numbers that I can exploit against bad secondaries. And this fits all the boxes. Love that. Love that. The, the best part about it is that like, that's just not a popular play. The Nobody books aren't paying attention to Troy Franklin is. So <laughs> uh, Corbin, you mentioned Malik neighbors, 71 and a half. Yeah. He's a, he's another one. I, I like his uh, receptions more than his yards this week, but I, I, he's another that I like thrown into some alt parlays. I love his alt receptions near the four five kind of range. Uh, he just gets there every week to those kind of numbers, but I can't take his regular number. Also, whilst I remember, I forgot to mention I love uh, John o. Smith over his receptions in the for the Dolphins. It's over three and a half at uh, quite decent plus money. He had four last week and six versus the Bills in week two. So that's one All I right. to mention. Jim. Darius Slayton has become a much bigger part of the offense. Much bigger part of the offense. Extremely low number. Went for 57 and 100. Now we're sitting at 38 and a half. If we do believe that Washington is going to be up, then the Giants are going to be throwing. And all the attention is going to be going to neighbors. All the attention is going to be going to Robinson. Um, I think Darius Slayton could get this in one to two catches. He's also been a bit of a downfield threat. You look at his totals, you know, 100 yards on four receptions. He only needs two catches yeah. to get over this. So I, I love the 38 and a half. Glad you brought him up. He had a huge catch uh, mm -hmm. last last week. So it, you make one of those catches, they're going to give you more chances uh, to do that. So uh, Raiders and the Bengals. Uh, it says a lot that there's no T. Higgins <laughs> props out here. So. Corbin, we're going back to our, our good friend, Alexander Madison. And for the record, full disclosure, I made fun of Alexander Madison at the beginning of the season. Like, you got to be kidding me. He's, like, now he's starting running back and we're betting on him and we're winning. Over oh, his, it, uh, he's, he's great. He's great, especially in the passing game. His totals the last four weeks, 29, 31, 32, and 23. I'm shocked this number isn't in the 20s yet, quite honestly. I'm just going to – it's one of those I've, I've rode it since, like, just before that streak, I'm going to carry on riding it. I think partic particularly the, they just don't have many options at wide receiver. I know they've got Bowers and they've got Myers. I do kind of like um, Jacoby Myers' uh, receptions this week, but he's just such a good check down option. And he's been getting, he's actually been getting quite long receptions, if I remember. He quite often has a reception in the like 11, 12 kind of range. So he only really needs like one, two, three catches to get there. He's another one. If they're down as well, you can take a live line. I, I've mentioned it before in the Discord when we've uh, we're doing some live lines. Jacoby, My uh, not J Alexander Matheson receiving. If they're down in the last quarter, is money. So, uh, Jim, you like any of these? Uh, these what? Brock Bowers, who's what one of the best tight ends in the league right now? Apparently, and he's also the only one in this roster that can run a route and catch a ball. So that's a great point. It's easy to look good. Uh yeah. yeah, with with Mayor out, then it's kind of all on him. You know, the theory that I had early in the year with they were going to run double tight end and run Bowers more as a split. Well, they don't really have that option. The other option is to bring in a you know practice squad tight end and just put him on the line as a block blocker, which they have. Uh, but Bowers is seeing a ton of looks. I think you can take Bowers and Myers over. I know it's Minshew. I know. But these guys are going to see volume. 
they're going to see volume. I, I I bet you you could take Bowers, Myers, and Madison over their receiving, and you probably at worst go two and one. That's a great way to look at it. You're you're probably 100 percent right. Yeah, they're pretty um, low numbers. Yeah. Uh, how about them Cowboys and the Falcons? Uh, Kyle Pitts. I I I saw some. Uh, I was listening to a podcast. So like Kyle Pitts is back. It was like he's never been here. Yes. Like it's it, like it's not like he was awesome and, <laughs> and now he's good. He's just good. He's no. a first time visitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I like. Uh, I I I like him. Forty seven and a half. He's looked good. Um. For the record, he did one hundred percent drop that ball before it got to the end zone. Uh. <laughs> or it got knocked out of his hands. Uh. To me, they got bailed out on that one. But uh, for yards, yeah, Kyle Pitts. I'll take. I'll take his over, Jim. I'm not going anywhere here with passing yards. Uh, just give me CD Lamb anytime TD score. Oh, okay. There's, there's, there's nobody else. Okay. Like, it's just it, Dak is going to look for him in the end zone. He's going to get those jet sweeps. They're going to try to get him the ball. Like I said, I think it's going to be a track meet. We've seen it all season. It's going to CD. Corbin? No. All right. Saints and the Panthers. Corbin? Another no? <laughs> Still no. Jim? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not going to try to find oh, something. Chargers and Browns, I, Corbin, I know you like this, this game. This one I can. I love uh, Tillman and uh, Elijah Moore over three and a half receptions each. Um, I'll kind of do both of them together because they're both very much the same idea. So Tillman had nine targets last week and seven receptions. Mm -hmm. Moore had 12 targets and eight receptions last wow. week. Now, I am obviously, I am expecting some drop-off here. They're not playing the Ravens it's we've mentioned uh Winston's film is now out there but still even if like they can have quite a big drop off and still both go over three and a half they what is that seven and eight that's like three less catches for Tillman this week uh it's crazy to me I think the run game the run game looks slightly better with Chubb but it's still it's not like He's suddenly back to how he was. I think they're going to have issues there. I think they are going to throw the ball, and I like both of those to go over three and a half receptions, quite honestly. Jim? Lockstep in this game. Lockstep. You know, I said we got to see what we get with Winston, um, but that's Winston. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. talking about the receivers here, and I don't think the books have adjusted the lines enough. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same with Flacco. Like, we, same we talked thing. We talked about it last time. Like I, uh, we'll get to it in a minute. But I love playing Downs and uh, Mo Ali Cox's receptions when uh, they had Flacco, and you could quite easily take a over when he's playing and an under when Richardson's playing. It's like night and day, and they the books don't seem to have clocked on. I wonder if we're going to get the same thing here with uh, the two that I just mentioned. I like Injoku the most out of all of them at fifty one and a half. That, that's my favorite in that game, but I think you can play. All these receiver numbers are low. Uh, Patriots and the Titans. Jimmy, you're talking about Hunter Henry, rinse and repeat. It's a really low total, and, you know, me and Andy were talking before this, and, you know, you brought up a great point that the Tennessee is, what, the best or one of the best? They're one of the best. They're, against, they're I think they the are best. the best, actually. Let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll look, yeah, I'll look them up. I yeah. It's one of those where it's like, oh, hey, yeah, like the Titans, um, they're, you know, they only allow, uh, what is it here? Yeah, 33.29. Mm -hmm. But Hunter Henry is better than a lot of these guys that they face. Well, like, they what else do the Titans do good? Like, even though they have, they only allow so much, the uh, game the, script could get They away. do not evaluate quarterbacks. <laughs> 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 they don't pick the right backup quarterback. All right, we got that. Um, I think this number is too low for Henry. Henry's proven that he is one of May's favorite targets, if not his favorite target. And how do you get a rookie quarterback comfortable? You throw to a big old tight end. And yeah. you can see the play calling starting to go that way. As well, if they do commit to Stevenson and could run the ball, play action plays directly into Henry's hands in this situation. On those third and sixes, it's going to be play action to Henry. So I think this number is low. It's a bit of an overreaction. Um 38 and a half. I'll still play it again. Um, uh, Jaguars and Eagles. I, I, I like Evan Ingram over 49 and a half because who else is he going to throw to? Who else is Trevor Lawrence going to throw the ball to, Corbin? Uh, I, I, I think most people are going to look at A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. I'm looking at the Jags going. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram is probably their number one right now. What do you think? 
Uh, I have no opinion on Engram. Okay. Uh, Jim's already spoiled my play. AJ Brown over oh his longest God. every single week. Just, just play it. <laughs> just play it. He's cleared it in every game this year. He's so strong and hard to defend. I don't see how the Jags secondary stops him. They're so bad. Uh, uh, 26 and a half for his longest. I love it. So It's only 20? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, the it's only, gonna the, it's gonna go for fifty or sixty. It'll be at the fifty, and they're gonna throw one down to the goal line. It's a great only, point, Carbon. Yeah, the only okay. way that doesn't his if there's pass interference, <laughs> they just uh, drag him to the ground. Uh, but he's so strong. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, matter. they can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bears and the Cardinals. Uh, this is a pass if I've ever seen one. I, I I can't trust any of these guys. Jim, Cole Komet, twenty nine and a half. Go I'm back to him. thinking. <laughs> yes. loves Cole Komet. <laughs> Love yes. you. <laughs> yes. I, if I'm the Bears coaching staff and I go back and I look at that film, I see massive missed opportunities. Massive missed opportunities. This is such a low total. In this situation, I expect an improvement from Williams compared to last week. I don't think he's going to light the world on fire, but 29 and a half? I mean, we're lower than we were last week by six and a half yards. And I think that was just a game script and a game plan that got out of control to get that under. So I'll go back to Cole Komet. I haven't played it yet. If it still sits at plus money, I could probably talk myself into that really easily. Might have to have a Cole Komet intervention. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Lions and Packers. Uh, yeah, Sam Laporta under receptions. <laughs> what do you think, Cor? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if anyone's going to talk about Sam Laporte, it's not National Tight End Day anymore, to, Corbin. <laughs> it has to be you with Sam Laporte. So. Yeah, under. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I again, you got to wait for the quarterback. I, I can't play anything for the till I know the quarterback. Does he so. have over three and a half receptions for the year? <laughs> like, what, like, like, that was inter- That was two, again. That was two and a half when I was looking yesterday. Mm. That's why I didn't play. I didn't want to discuss in it the I rain. Was, I was like two and a half. He's no not chance. going over in the dome and dry in perfect conditions. Three and a half. Yeah, that's an under. So. Yeah, that's a, Jim. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the uh, Rams and the Seahawks. Oh, okay. So he's listed. Yeah, he's listed. Not only listed, five mm-hmm. and a half. So they're going no issue whatsoever with the knee. Uh, to me, that is like it. It pushes me more back to. Uh, uh, Matthew Stafford overs rather than uh, rather than anything here. So, uh, Corbin, you like any of these receiving props, Rams and Seahawks? Oh yeah, you know my favorite one on the board. I love uh, Charbonnet over eleven and a half receiving. Uh, this is my favorite play on the board. He's over in seven of eight this season. He had uh, twenty two receiving in the last game that they played each other. I think this is going to be a competitive, close game. No DK Metcalf. I think this sets up quite nicely for Charbonnet to have uh, into the twenties in receiving this week. So. Love a play like that where one screen pass you can go over. That, that's yep. the best part. Jim, nothing really. Just point to mention uh, Demarcus Robinson. Uh, I expected when Puka came back that we'd see a little bit more of Atwell, and it didn't work out that way. It was Robinson. Um, so I think that's probably why we don't have a listing on Atwell right now. Uh, if one of these guys do go down, Cup or Nakua, it is Robinson that will step into that spot. It is not going to be Atwell. So keep your, if you see that happen in game, just look at Demarcus Robinson props. Colts and the Vikings, Corbin. Uh, yes. Here we go. What uh, What do we do? I, I already mentioned it. I'm going to Josh Downs over five and a half receptions with Flacco. He has eight, nine, and seven. I think that at worst this is a close game. I think they could quite easily be down. I th- the Vikings' pass defense isn't great. I think I think Flacco is going to find Downs quite easily. And then I also kind of like uh, Moali Cox over one and a half receptions with Flacco. He has four and two. So I'm going to take both of those. Uh, also got a Justin Jefferson alt coming up. Cause I, I like him, but I can't take a 84 and a half. So Jim. Oh, you're on mute. Jim. Muted. You kind of have to like, let the microphone hear you. I don't want you to hear my prop. It's not good. Oh, that's okay. the best prop of the day. All right, moving I was, on. I was <laughs> going to talk about a tight end and get made fun of again. So I just, no. <laughs> Uh, do you want TJ Hawkinson uh, coming off of a <laughs> hell no? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want Alec Pierce 22 and a half. Uh, 
<laughs> he just gets these shots. He gets two or three a game that are, if he catches one of them, it's going over 22 and a half. And it's a question of whether Flacco can get there. Most frustrating part of the year was when we had the Pierce over and we had a pass interference call that brought one back. And we had a holding call that brought one back. Yeah. yeah just then we had Flacco open. miss him. I mean, yeah. it should have been like 90 something yards <laughs> receiving. And we get what he, he ended with like 14. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. It's, but this number is stupidly low. He's going to get two or three looks a game. I like the two, 22 and a half. Aaron Jones over 21 and a half easily. My best. Uh, he said 37, 23, 24, 46, 46, and 36. The only game he didn't go over was the very first game of the year where they beat the Giants 28-6, and he didn't need to be on the field. He mm-hmm. busts a long one. His long is 25, 17, 24, 14, 20, 18. So he just gets one of these long ones every single game. Uh, the Colts are not great against running backs and receiving, so I like that one to go over. So, all right, guys, um, let's move on, Corbin, to your. Uh, let's see, which one you want to do first? Let's do the same game parlay here. Uh, so this is going to be your Jefferson Downs Darnold. So we're looking at the Colts and the Vikings, the same game parlay that gets us to minus one thirty-eight. Talk these three legs out. Yeah, we, ju- we just brought it up, so it's kind of a continuation. So uh, I love Jefferson to go over his normal total, but this this just gives you like that margin of error, basically. So he's, he, he's cleared this in every game except week one, which he had 59, so just one yard short. Mentioned the uh, Colts' pass defense is awful. I think he's going to soar. I think you actually could take him to go ladder it up and go for him to go over 100 this game, quite honestly. But for this one, just to get 60... Uh, down to have four plus receptions. I just re- mentioned the uh, receptions he has had with Flacco. He soared over this easily. I think he's had like, I, I forgot what my numbers just were, eight, nine, and seven. And we need him just to have four in this one. Uh, and then Darnold again, I, I think the, the Colts' pass defense is really bad. So I'm just going to keep playing this. Uh, Darnold has cleared this in every single game this year. And I don't think the Colts are going to stop him. So three pieces that I love together for minus 138. Love it. Love it. Uh, let's take a look at some alt lines. Yeah. Um, so, my so, boy, Bo Nix. <laughs> yeah. So these first two parts are obviously a same game parlay together. I, I couldn't find a third piece to bring the juice down enough. So that, that's why I added the Eagles. You'll see in a minute. Um, so Bo Nix to throw for 175. I mentioned that I kind of like his total where it is, but I feel like this just gives you that extra margin for error that I think is really important with a rookie quarterback. Uh, he's gone over in three of the last four, and the one he didn't was in a blowout versus the Saints when they didn't need him to do anything. They're so good at Ravens are so good at defending the rush that they're going to throw the ball more. We've already mentioned that the Ravens' pass defense isn't great. My only concern is that it is a, a road game. His performances on the road haven't looked that great this year, and obviously he's a rookie. But that's why I've built this into the alt line of 175 and not the original, which is in the 200s. Um, Javante Williams, two plus receptions. This might be one of my favorite pieces. I already mentioned that I love his normal receptions. He's cleared this in every single game since week one. I'm expecting them to be down or at least close. If Bo's throwing the ball, Javante Williams is going over this total. Uh, And then I think that was about minus 170, minus 180 together. And I was playing around with some alt spreads in that game. And I was, I thought, Instead of trying to force it into a same game parlay, just add the Eagles plus seven and a half. I think that's a way better look than trying to predict something else in that game. The Jags are just not good. I think, uh, like we mentioned already, I think the Eagles are better than we're giving credit for. I think they're going to start building momentum. And the Jags are just not... Jags aren't Even if the Jags win, I don't see them winning by more than one touchdown. So, yeah, wrap that all together for minus 138. Love it, Corbin. Nice job on the alt plays. And Jim, let's take a look at inside the trenches. You're going to isolate the Raiders in the Bengals game. What are we seeing? Well, I figured I'd pick a game where we have two absolutely horrible units on the offensive line. There you go. Let's talk about the bad teams. We we always say this. We don't want to bet on good teams. We want to bet against the bad teams. Unfortunately, we have two bad teams going against each other. So how can we make money in this spot? Well, the Raiders with an early bad offensive line are going to be 
probably missing, well, definitely missing their center, Andre James, and they're going to be missing Dylan Parham, their right guard. So that already sets up to be not a good recipe for Mr. Gardner Minshew, who we've seen under pressure, loves to turn that ball over. On the flip side with the Bengals, we have no Orlando Brown, and this line that they have attempted to improve year after year after year is just bad. I think Burrow does not look right. I already mentioned, we all we already mentioned, no T. Higgins. That changes this Bengals offense immensely. You know, Jamar Chase gets all the headlines, but T. Higgins is what makes that passing game go. We have a couple pass rushers in this game that are all pro all world max crosby trey hedrickson this is going to be fun to watch the two of these guys absolutely wreak havoc on both teams so that's where i'm expecting to go with this i don't see either team having super success running the ball i think it's going to end up being a through the air game and that's going to set up for some errors from these quarterbacks love it love it great work guys all right uh don't forget to hit the like button Code word of the day is SUIT, S-U-I-T. And as always, all plays can be found at wagertalk.com. It's going to do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck on your place, and we'll see everyone later.